Hi, I'm Malia Sternstein, a reporter with NextGov, and I have with me today Mike Janke, co-founder of Silent Circle, an encryption service, um, encrypted communication service. And uh, before getting into the entrepreneurial uh, realm, he was a uh, member of Navy Team SEAL. Six, Seal team, team Six, yeah. Seal Team Six. And so what I'd like for you to talk about is you still got the government instincts in you. You're a civilian now. Um, you started this company before the Snowden affair. Um, in light of where you were before and where you are today, um, can, you, can you describe for us why um, it's important for the average Joe to have communication services yeah. like yours and uh, what the, I guess, what the limitations are as well. Sure, that's a great question, Aaliyah. Well, if, if, you, if you look at things um, since the summer of Snowden, um, a lot of what we now understand is that your data is gold, gold to the world, not just government like the NSA, um, law enforcement, but it's also on the commercial side to the Googles, the Apples, the Samsungs, and so forth, um, but as well as hackers and other nation states. So it is literally invisible gold going up. And as citizens of the world, you are under deluge from government, hackers, um, you know, other corporations uh, for, for that data. So it, it's very, very important that people have a trusted um, international mechanism that they can utilize to say, no, 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 this is what I, I would like to have a, as private and what not. Now, what else the summer of Snowden has showed us is, and, and I don't just poke you know, the NSA in the eye, there are 72 other NSA-like countries out there that have very robust NSAs, is that what happens with this absolutely magical surveillance machine, right, that has almost totality in its, in its uh, capability? What happens if an administration 10, 15 years from now has more of the sensibilities of Vladimir Putin than they do of Thomas Jefferson? So what does that mean about their capability? So you're seeing that happen in other countries third world, even second world countries that have uh, just amazing, uh, because of Moore's Law, the, the, the ability to surveil their citizens, reporters, human rights groups. And they don't necessarily have moralistic leadership. They can literally turn the screws down and lock down society. And that's a scary thought. So the conversation and everything we do has to be about um, how much uh, control should we allow that gives us protection with governments? And how much can we actually bring back to the private individual to preserve some level of privacy? I think it's a scary times um, because we have to look at things 8, 10, 12 years out. And I don't know about you, but I don't know of any power that a government has ever granted itself or capability that it's ever pulled back. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's a very friction point. Uh, of a conversation, and, and it's it, it's interesting, you know. At Silent Circle, we're an actual an international company. We're not a U.S. company, and uh, our data centers are in Canada and Switzerland, and soon to be else elsewhere around the world. Um, our employees are German, you know, Spanish, Argentinian, Canadian, U.S., British, um, Greek, um, Latvian. So, uh, you know, you you have to look at things as it relates to the world. We have individual consumers from 131 countries that are customers day in and day out. So we have a responsibility um, first and foremost to the world. But what we don't do is we don't become political. Uh, Phil and I were asked to, Phil Zerman, my co-founder, were asked to um, you know, go speak at an Italian parliament last month and rail against the, uh, mm. the Italians. But that's not what mm. our role is. We're not uh, here to choose sides. We're here Obviously, we're privacy advocates, but uh, we also understand a little bit of the other side. We don't want car bombs going off. So it's an it's a interesting time to be doing this. Yeah. Bring this home for 
a second here. I'm a government employee. Uh, what's the difference between protecting my privacy in my personal life and protecting my identity, which I guess would be important for my personal and government right. life? Well, um, uh, two, they, 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 they interrelate um, and they each have their own subset of, of concerns. But they do uh, interrelate. Uh, I guess I would say, when was the last time you ever had a phone call in your personal life that you didn't expect it to be only between you and that other person? That's privacy, right? When is the last time you ever sent um, you know, a romantic text to your significant other that you didn't expect it to be just between you two? That is privacy. Mm -hmm. Um, identity is, I'd like to go in and make a, a, a pay a bill online. Somehow, and you really want that bank to be able to authenticate that it is truly you, not a hacker who is emptying your bank account. That's identity. Um, where the two, you know, kind of intersect is um, in your work life, whether you work for the government or somebody else. And this is the big issue of bring your own device, right? Uh, for us at Silent Circle, we, we, we boil it down to bring your own identity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the mobile users of today, uh, brand new mobile phone uh, in the first world, people were only keeping them for a year and 18 months and, and upgrading, right? So it's impossible for a government or an organization to uh, spend money and hand out, here, Lee, here's your new phone, when 12 months later it's two years defunct, right? So you have your own. And now there's an understanding of people, much like you, that says, okay, the government has issued you a laptop and a phone. You intuitively understand that everything you do on those devices are um, collected, they are stored, they are analyzed, and, and if there's a, an issue, let's say it's a workplace issue, they can be retrieved and either used against you or to help you know, clear your name. So that's people are well aware of it. So this is why people protect that personal device with all their gusto, because that's their personal life. And if they want to say something that's not politically correct on Twitter, or if they want to buy you know, lingerie, that's their private world. That's mm -hmm. something that they don't want someone to know. Now, from the government's point of view or a corporation's point of view, that's the friction point. It's about control. Control in everything in our lives. So identity, authentication and privacy, mm -hmm. they do intertwine, but they also have their own subsets of issues. Uh, at this point in time, you are talking about some pretty heavy, important issues. Uh, thanks. I'm going to let you get back to traveling the world and <laughs> talking about all these issues with uh, citizens everywhere. Thank you. Well, thank you, Leah. It's an honor to be here.